Hey guys, James, James and DIY here working on a Tundra again today. Uh, we're gonna be pulling these valve covers because as you can see down there, we have some pretty good leaks. Um, so this, this is the harder side, the driver's side. It's not too bad though. Um, mainly we're just gotta get some hoses out of the way and we'll get the coils out of the way. And that's really about it. The other side's even easier than this. So we'll go ahead and start by uh, getting the coils out and then getting the hoses pulled out of the way. And then this top cover right here, we might need to remove that in order to get this hose uh, disconnected. Disconnect the coils, we just push this little button here and then wiggle the connector off. If it's not lifting up the little piece, you can give it a little help with some sort of tiny little screwdriver or pick. I'm gonna attempt to leave the two fuel lines here and just uh, move the evap line out of the way. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit easier to leave them here than it will be to disconnect them. So I'm just gonna do that. And it looks like this hose is gonna be easier to remove right here. We'll try that. So it looks like we have four bolts on the top of the valve cover and four bolts on the bottom of the valve cover and then one uh, right here in the middle at the front. So once we get those off, it should be enough stuff here out of the way, we can pop the valve cover off. Okay, that bolt's not even tight. That bolt is not tight. That bolt is not tight. Okay, none of these bolts are tight, so what that tells me is that this gasket is completely worn out so far that it is flat, which has allowed the bolts to essentially loosen. Because when this gasket was new, it would have been thick enough that whenever they were torqued to spec, they would actually be torqued to spec. Whereas now, the gasket is so flat that it is no longer torqued to spec. Even if the bolts haven't loosened themselves, the gasket is taking up less room. And that's why all these bolts are loose. Every single one, every bolt is loose. Okay. Okay, we've got all the bolts out. Before you pull the valve cover, uh, what you wanna do is just kinda, if you have compressed air, blow any sort of dirt or crap that's around the valve cover. You just wanna get that out of the way uh, so that nothing falls down into the head. I'm also gonna clean some of this oil down here with some brake clean. Okay, I'm gonna take a little small pry bar right here and just, just carefully lift up on the valve cover Make sure all the bolts are out.
Passenger side is easier. There's less stuff in the way. You don't even have to take off the air tube if you don't want. I'm just gonna take it off so that you can see what I'm doing better. You don't have to take it off. Got the same nine bolts on this side, four on the top, four on the bottom, and then one, one in the center and the front. Okay, with both valve covers off, there's a few things we need to do to get ready to put the new gaskets in. Uh, for one thing, we want to clean, you know, all the the groove here where the where the gasket sits. Uh, you can use brake cleaner and a rag or something like that, or compressed air if you have that. The other thing we need to do is we need to pull these seals out. These are the spark plug tube seals, and depending on how old your gasket is. These could be rock hard and really hard to get out, or they could be nice and easy to get out. I usually start with a, pry, a little pry bar like this and just kind of lift up under here and see if they'll pop out easily. Probably gonna break into a thousand pieces, but we'll see. Yeah, see, this is what you'll find typically and then you'll see the rest of it's kind of broken off in here. So because these seals are so hard, uh, they just kind of broke apart as you saw. Uh, so at this point, what we want to do is between the seal and the valve cover, you can wedge a screwdriver. And then what you'll do is you'll just use a hammer, drive it in right there. And then once once it's wedged down in there, you can kind of bend it up. Uh, the other thing is on these Toyotas, they have little tabs, which is probably hard to see because of all the, all the gunk here. But there's these little tabs that kind of hold the seal in place. And if they're getting in your way, you can bend them up. Might be easier to see right here. You'll see this little kind of protrusion coming out. all the seals out and go ahead and clean up the valve cover. I'm just going to use a little brake clean and a rag. All right, we're ready to put gaskets on. Got this fail pro kit i'll leave a link down below it comes with uh the new grommets for the uh, bolts the old valve cover on comes with the uh, new spark plug tube seals and then obviously the valve cover gaskets okay when you're installing the tube seals uh, the easiest way is to coat it with some silicone spray or a very light film of oil or grease or something like that Silicone spray is what I like to use, but if you don't have it, then don't bother buying it. Just use a little engine oil or some use some sort of lubricant, whatever you have around the house should be fine. These are 
made to stand up to oil, so using oil to lubricate them will not hurt anything. If you notice, the seal doesn't want to go in because of the, the little ears here that we talked about earlier. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just bend one of them up on each side to uh, allow the seal to go in without damaging it. You want the seal to sit as flush as possible down in the valve cover. Once that's done, any of the tabs that you bent, you can bend back into place. Everything's cleaned up. Find the gasket here that matches. Uh, tube seals are in. So I'll just start placing the, uh, the actual valve cover gasket here in the grooves. This will only go one way, so you can't get it wrong. Just want to make sure that it's down in the grooves completely on the whole valve cover. Okay, with the valve covers all cleaned up, we need to clean up the uh, heads where the valve covers mount. So it's basically gonna be this surface all the way around here that's shiny. And then, you know, as much as you can get off of here, cause this is just dirt and gunk that's gonna fall in. So we wanna clean basically from this brown yellow line all the way up to there. Another thing you wanna look at is in the corners here, we have some silicone RTV, which we'll need to reapply, but we need to get this old stuff off. So I just use a little, little screwdriver or something like that to just kind of flake that off of there. The same thing up here in this corner. You don't want that falling in though, so we want to go up and out of the way here if you can. Get that out of there and then the same thing on the other side valve cover uh, the RTV is just gonna be uh, right here right down there if we go to the back it's gonna be a little bit back here as well you can see some RTV right there and there and then right there and there so we want to do the same thing and kind of get that out of the way. So if you look closely, you will see the kind of lines 
here and here. The reason why you put the RTV on all these lines is because oil can seep through there. So you can see you have a whole layer of RTV there as well as there. And on the front, it's a little bit different, but what you have is a sharp, you have a sharp turn right there. The same up here, the gasket has to make a sharp turn going up here. So the gasket comes around here, goes up here, and then it has to make this sharp turn right here. So anywhere there's a sharp turn, we wanna put RTV. Down there we have the sharp turn. Right here, so we'll put RTV right there. And then on the back, as I showed, anywhere there's a, a seam like that, 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 and that, we wanna put RTV on all those seams. So any seams and any sharp corners, you wanna put a dab of RTV. So I'm gonna clean up the head here with the uh, same, th same method, just uh, some brake cleaner and a rag. Be careful not to let any of the dirt fall into the head. Okay, I've got most of this cleaned up. Um, you can see everything's nice and shiny. You wanna focus for sure where I showed you on these corners, getting all the RTV off and uh, use some extra brake clean because you don't want any oil residue left where you're putting the RTV. So uh, you wanna use obviously brake cleaner on the whole thing to get the oil residue off, but for sure, for sure, uh, use some brake clean on all the spots where the RTV goes. So right here, you can see I got all the silicone off in that corner, use some RTV and clean that up. Down here in this corner, all the RTV is gone. So use some extra brake clean to get all the oil residue off that. Same thing back here on the four spots where the seams are at. Use some extra brake clean right there just to make sure that all the oil residue is off so uh, the RTV will stick. It does not like to seal well if there is a old oil residue. So once you get all the big stuff clean, go back with a clean rag and um, some brake clean and get any of the extra oil residue off. Okay, we've got everything cleaned up. Uh, last step is to replace all these rubber grommets on the bolts. This isn't absolutely necessary, but if the rubber is worn out, it could throw off your torque settings a little bit. So if, if your set comes with the rubber grommets, then go ahead and replace them. I've got all 18 grommets off. I want to start putting the new ones on. These should slide on pretty easily, but just in case, we've got the silicone spray. I'll just give them a little douche. Okay, we're all ready to go now and put the valve covers back on. We need to um, put some RTV in the spots that I was telling you about. So I like to use this Ultra Black from Permatex. It, um, it's very good for oil related sealing. And we just want to put a dab of it on each of the spots that we talked about.
Okay, I'm gonna double check that my RTV is in place. I'm gonna double check that my gasket for the valve cover is in place. All my spark plug tube seals are in place. Once you have the valve cover in place, you have the spark plug tubes that are coming into contact with the seals. So just make sure all those are kind of lined up. And once they are, you can slide it down over the spark plug tubes. should look something like that once it's down into place. Get all the bolts started. With all the bolts started by hand, um, just go ahead and run all of them in until they stop. There'll be a positive stop once they're ready to go. I have to start from the center of the valve cover and then work my way out. So there's a positive stop. Positive stop. Okay, I couldn't find the torque spec on these, but I would imagine it's somewhere around 100 to 130 inch pounds, which is not very much. These are small bolts. So we just want to kind of snug them up. Work our way from the inside out. Now because of the rubber gasket and the rubber grommets on the bolts, the torque will change just like when we took them off, they were all loose. So it's a good idea to check these every maybe six months to a year and make sure they are torqued correctly. You can use a torque wrench. You wanna have it set at the same every time. So let's say 100, and 20 inch pounds, maybe more than that. And just torque them maybe every, every year if it's your car. I'm gonna clean the rest of this off down here so that we can uh, make sure that uh, there's no oil leaks once it's all done. Okay, let's work on this side. It's got a little bit of more um, crusties that don't want to come off with a rag. So I'm just going to use this little wire toothbrush here to just kind of get some of that hard to get stuff off there.
that's it guys, let's wrap it up. We wanna just start it up, make sure there's no leaks. Probably gonna smoke for a little bit because of the brake cleaner and my greasy fingerprints. Once it burns all that off, the smoke will stop. Okay, looks good, I don't see any leaks. It's a pretty easy job. Even for an inexperienced mechanic, you can get this done pretty quick. If you can't find a torque spec, use, uh, use the rule of thumb that I gave you. Otherwise, um, it's a good idea, like I said, to recheck the torque. As time goes on, the rubber will compress on the gasket and on the rubber grommets. So you will want to retorque those. If this is your car and you have access to it, retorque those maybe after six months and then again, check it again at a year just to make sure that they're torqued properly. That way you don't have any premature leaks.